and now it's splenomegaly and uh, this is also one of the most common case appearing in the PACES exam you can get splenomegaly alone you can get hepatosplenomegaly you can get splenomegaly with ascites you can get splenomegaly without ascites and there are multiple causes for splenomegaly as I explained yesterday for hepatomegaly that uh, if you find splenomegaly on abdominal examination then this is not a big task it is easy to palpate the spleen but then then you have to see what is the underlying cause for splenomegaly okay so and for that uh, all causes should be in your mind and uh, relative signs for each cause should be in, in your back of mind so that when you are doing inspection while standing at the foot end you can appreciate those signs and further when you examine more signs you find and then you can know what is the underlying cause for the splenomegaly now there can be different commands there can be command that patient is having uh, abdominal fullness kindly examine the patient patient is having itching in case if it is due to polycythemia rubra vera or lymphoma leukemias lymphomas kindly examine the patient uh, abdomen if the patient presented with fatigue and uh, kindly examine the abdomen and fatigue will be in this case most likely will be due to anemia okay which is very common and uh, then patient is having uh, some joint problems kindly examine the abdomen so these are all clues that uh, you should suspect that uh, there could be splenomegaly so and when you are going to present splenomegaly to the examiner uh, just simply you will say that uh, there is splenomegaly three fingers or four fingers how many fingers you find four fingers below the left coastal margin it is non-tender if you want to say firm and smooth you can say so no extra detail about splenomegaly you will say okay in this way you will invite problems for yourself just be simple in your presentation okay it's a patient is having splenomegaly four fingers below the left coastal margin it is non tender firm and smooth okay so like this it will be enough and rest uh, you can add on uh, the signs whatever you find now it will depend upon uh, your patient is having which underlying cause now first of all you should know the common causes uh, for splenomegaly because when you will find splenomegaly they will ask examiner will ask you in the examiner okay tell me the causes okay what are your differentials and what could be the other causes like this this is a very common question so the causes should be on your tips now uh, I will tell you that if patient is having massive splenomegaly the causes could be chronic myelite leukemia myelofibrosis calazar malaria and AIDS with MAIV infection and if having moderate splenomegaly then portal hypertension lymphoma leukemia thalassemia and glycogen storage diseases and if mild splenomegaly then other myeloproliferative disease like polycythemia rubra vera hemolysis in hemolysis there is heredity spherocytosis okay and patient can have jaundice along with it infections due to infective endocarditis most likely you remember autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and felty syndrome associated with rheumatoid arthritis okay and SLE and infiltrative conditions like amyloidosis and sarcoidosis we know that amyloidosis is the end stage of any chronic disease so uh, always remember amyloidosis and idiopathic could be so now if you find splenomegaly so you have to decide uh, see the size whether this is uh, massive moderate or mild and then you can make your differentials that what could be the cause as I told you the causes according to this you will categorize now what you can see on inspection on inspection you can find pallor if there is pallor and also on examination there is conjunctival pallor then uh, as I explained before anemia uh, could be present in any chronic disease but here the common is always common and in relation to splenomegaly if patient is having anemia then three things should come into your mind either it could be um, malignancy hematological malignancy and uh, like it could be leukemia lymphoma and thalassemia okay like this if you see that patient is polycythemic 
that is having purple and hyperemic conjunctiva and blush patient so then polycythemia rubra vera should come into your mind okay now if you see that patient is having uh, arthropathy having uh, deform deform hands because of uh, uh, arthropathy then rheumatoid arthritis should come into your mind okay if you see a rash on the patient face there are three type of rash in the sle so this sle should come into your mind okay and if you find signs for the chronic liver disease then portal hypertension and chronic liver disease should come into your mind so these are the common common signs which i told you which will help you to come to the underlying cause okay so now how you will investigate your patient you will say like this that sir i will do full blood count looking for all three cell lines because i can expect anemia and wbc count can be low and high and same with the platelets and blood film looking for schistocytes and malarial parasites liver function test and um, serum ldh and beta 2 microglobulin and autoimmune profile esr and chest x ray uh, looking for any mediastinal lymphadenopathy hiv testing and uh, hep b hep c and after that you will say chest x ray okay and then ct scan uh, ultrasound and ct scan okay and then if needed lymph node or bone marrow biopsy so like this you will say you will investigate the patient and uh, and if uh, few things you should know that if patient is having splenectomy then which what advices you need to give to the patient sometimes they can ask and this is in general common you should know first of all vaccination you will advise and this is pneumococcal h influenza and meningococcal these are all encapsulated organisms okay because when they splenectomy the encapsulated organisms cannot be removed so patient are prone to infections with these organism so we will vaccinate the patient we will advise prophylactic antibiotics like oral phenoxymethylpenicillin or erythromycin for at least 2 years or maybe lifelong and uh, patient who develop infections despite these measures should, uh, should uh, come to the hospital urgently for parenteral antibiotics and patient should be consulted about malaria prophylaxis and travel advice and patient should wear a medical alert, alert bracelet this medical alert bracelet this is very important and uh, very commonly you can see in the uk in the uk the system the health system is organized and uh, they are and they are very much educated and patients are also educated they know about their disease so usually patients uh, about uh, like uh, uh, some diseases patients are wearing medical alert bracelet so when you are doing inspection of any patient so please keep an eye on the medic alert bracelet also because the disease name is written over it or any drug so it can give you clue about what the patient is having okay and uh, felty syndrome uh, you should know this is also important and common in the uh, it actually in the zero positive rheumatoid arthritis patient uh, if they are having splenomegaly and neutropenia then this is felty syndrome okay and uh, one thing more i want to tell you that uh, in investigations if patient is having myeloproliferative disorder then uh, myeloproliferative disease uh, then uh, what investigations you will carry for those specific bcr abl gene translocation and philadelphia chromosome okay this you will do and what will be what will be its treatment its tyrosine kinase inhibitor which is imitinib and hydroxyurea okay this will be enough and uh, like uh, if you find uh, lymphadenopathy and splenomegaly or along with it hepatomegaly hepatosplenomegaly or splenomegaly with lymphadenopathy okay so examiner will ask you what are your differential so you will say my differentials include most likely lymphoproliferative disorder but i will keep myeloproliferative disorder also in my differential list 
and if you can could not appreciate uh, lymph uh, lymph nodes then you will keep uh, myeloproliferative disorder on the top okay and uh, now the common uh, the causes for combined hepatosplenomegaly this also you should know and uh, this include infective causes like hiv infective endocarditis schistosomiasis hep c and infiltrative causes like glycogen storage diseases amyloidosis sarcoidosis and chronic liver disease with tumor myeloproliferative disorder lymphoproliferative disorders and connective tissue disorders like rheumatoid arthritis okay so hopefully uh, this will be enough and uh, you understood about it if any question then you can ask please like share and subscribe my youtube channel for more videos thank you